Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's highly requested edition of What I Eat in a Day YouTuber Reviews, I'm going to be taking a look at, drum roll please, Sadia from Pickup Limes. You guys have requested this review pretty much every single week, so finally we're gonna do it, if for no other reason than to really demonstrate an amazing vegan YouTuber that you should definitely be following. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Sadia, she's a Canadian vegan dietitian who lives in the Netherlands and runs the very popular YouTube channel, Pickup Limes. And with an impressive like 3 million YouTube subscribers, I am pretty proud of this fellow RD. Now, before we jump into my review, I wanna start with my general disclaimer that the information in this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and you should always seek out the help of a registered dietitian or medical professional for your unique needs. And on that note, let's meet Sadia, starting with her day one meals. Question for you, do you add your milk to your granola or your granola to your milk? Milk to the granola. Okay, so I just have to say that Sadia's channel is just so, so dreamy. And so is her actual food. So before this clip, we saw Sadia prepare a big batch of granola featuring oats, quinoa, almonds, coconut seeds, sugar, dried fruit, and nut butter. I also love the idea of making granola from scratch, and Sadia's doesn't seem restrictive or diety at all, while still being super nourishing. She's balancing real sugar and real oil with super nutrient dense ingredients like nuts, seeds, oats, quinoa, and dried fruit. And we've got a really nice balance here of carbs from the fruit and grains, plus fat and protein from all of those nuts and seeds. There's actually about 14 grams of protein here, so definitely not bad. But if you were having this, let's say after a workout and you needed a little bit more, a really easy swap would be to go for soy yogurt over coconut yogurt, which is what Sadia was serving hers with, because soy yogurt has about 10 grams of protein per cup versus about one or two in the coconut. Let's see what lunch has in store. And I would always recommend having some kind of greens with this. Arugula works really, really well, but we've just got some sprouts that we need to use up. So we're gonna put that on our sandwiches. Okay, I need to know who has a trio of beautiful sprouts just like hanging out in their kitchen other than this woman. I mean, these meals are just like too pretty to be real. <laughs> no, but seriously, I love this fresh take on like a green pesto using sun-dried tomatoes instead. You know, pesto is one of those super versatile staples. And I love that Sadia uses almonds instead of expensive pine nuts, which also adds higher amounts of protein, fiber, calcium, and monounsaturated fats compared to pine nuts. So not only are you saving some money, but you're also getting an extra nutrition boost as well. Now, I also love the addition of nutritional yeast to boost up the protein and the vitamin B12 while adding that characteristic kind of Parmesan flavor. Let's move on to dinner load it up with some tzatziki. I like to drizzle on a little bit of hot sauce and then that's it, dinner is served. Yum, this is great. I mean, falafels are just this excellent vegan plant-based protein option. And if you can make it from scratch, it makes an awesome batch prep meal that you can easily pop in the freezer and just like pull out in a pinch. I also find falafel is one of those foods that is really approachable to both vegans and non-vegans alike. I mean, we've got a nice amount of protein and fiber from the chickpeas and peas. We've got carbs from the pita, healthy fats from the tahini and flax, and of course, tons of crunchy, colorful veg. This does not feel like restrictive diet food. It's really just delicious, balanced, and ultimately a wholesome meal. And it's so refreshing to see in the vegan YouTube space. Let's take a look at dessert. Pop on the lid and then put it in the fridge for at least one hour, if not. That looks super yum. And I love that this mousse uses only three ingredients, aquafaba, tea, and dark chocolate. 
So if you are not in the know of this little hack, aquafaba is the liquid found in any can of cooked pulses like beans, peas, and lentils. Basically, the small bits of protein, sugar, and starches leach out of the cooked pulses, resulting in a viscous liquid that makes a really magical foaming agent and baking substitute for egg whites. There is currently not a ton of information about its nutritional benefits as aquafaba as a cooking agent wasn't even discovered until 2014. However, what we do know is that it's relatively low in protein, calories, and overall nutrition. So with that said, if you're not specifically following a vegan diet, it may be nutritionally beneficial to stick with using regular eggs in your baking as they're just more nutritionally dense. But if you're out of eggs and you need something in a pinch, aquafaba can definitely save the day. It's also a really great way to reduce waste if you're opening a can of beans to make falafel, for example, anyways. So I love any hack that will just cut back on the amount of waste that we have in our day. Let's move on to day two and have a look what Sadia is eating while on holiday in Spain. Oh, this breakfast looks so good. I mean, we've got some healthy fats from the chia and the peanut butter. We've got fiber and carbs from the millet and the fruit. And we also have almost 20 grams of protein from the mixture of the soy milk, yogurt mix, and the millet. So that is pretty good. I also love how Sadia inserts like really helpful nutrition nuggets in with her recipes. Like for example, mentioning that millet is actually gluten-free. So it's great for anyone who has celiac disease or gluten intolerance. She also highlights that she's using calcium fortified soy milk, which may be important for anyone following a vegan diet as statistically, people who are following plant-based diets may have lower calcium intakes. She also provides some really practical cooking tips for cooking millet by recommending soaking it overnight prior to cooking to help get rid of the nutrient inhibitors that can interfere with nutrient absorption. So Sadia is specifically referring to phytates or phytic acid, which is really a compound found in varying amounts in a variety of plant-based foods like seeds, grains, legumes, and nuts. Like Sadia mentions earlier in this clip, phytic acid can interfere with the absorption of nutrients like potassium, calcium, iron, zinc, and magnesium. But that's not a reason to avoid plant-based foods like certain YouTube carnivores might say. The good news is that food processing techniques like soaking, sprouting, and germination can actually enhance the nutritional quality, digestibility, and bioavailability of the nutrients contained in things like millet seeds. I'm also glad to see that Sadia is highlighting this kind of lesser known ingredient to her followers because millet actually provides a good amount of protein, calcium, and iron. Okay, let's see what Sadia is having for a snack as she goes on like a little bit of a walk with her partner through some sand dunes. Yeah, I usually put it in the drink because uh, it's just extra fiber, especially when you're traveling and you know you're not really regular. So then when you put the little chia seeds in it, and then you're just drinking your fiber essentially. And to me, it's kind of like bubble tea. I don't know. You don't even really taste it, I can feel it. No, and especially when you flavor the water too. Oh, it's so Ooh. pistachios. We've got these oranges, which are, I think, the most tasty, juicy oranges we've had. I'm looking forward to this. I've got these two kind of energy bars. They're pretty much just those date nut bars, you know? Okay, so I love flavoring water with vegetables and fruit and herbs, especially if sometimes you feel like you're getting a little tired or bored of plain H2O. And the chia seed bubble tea hack, genius. I never thought to do something like that, so I love when I learn something new from a fellow YouTuber. Because let's be real for a hot minute, folks. Travel constipation is a very real thing. And it sucks when you're trying to enjoy your holiday and you feel like crap because you literally can't crap. But it's also really common, often because the stress of traveling, changes in sleep, eating, and exercise routine, and often drinking more alcohol or eating less vegetables or fiber. Even us dietitians are not immune to these effects. So 
adding some chia seeds to your water is really a great way to kind of kill two birds with one stone by staying hydrated while also getting in that extra fiber boost at the same time. One tablespoon of chia seeds provides five grams of fiber, which is about 20% of your daily needs. And chia seed is a soluble fiber, which forms a gel-like consistency, which really helps add bulk and moisture to stool, which just makes it easier to pass. So this is definitely an awesome and easy practical travel tip. As for her snack, I mean, definitely some really excellent snack choices right here. We've got a really good combination of what I call the hunger crushing combo that I always talk about when it comes to snacks. We've got some healthy fats, we've got protein, we've got fiber from the pistachios and energy bar. Um, we've got some beautiful oranges in there for hydration and energizing carbs. And while I could not find specific nutrition info on these particular bars, I looked everywhere, I do know that they're made out of dates, nuts, and cocoa powder. So again, we've got a nice combination of fat, carbs, and a little bit of protein. Getting in some carbs with fat or protein is a good option for a casual hike in the dunes like this, because unlike when we're doing a sprint for our workout, where fat, fiber, or protein may kind of slow you down, for longer duration, slower, steady exercise like this, you'll want some energy from carbs, but you'll also want that energy to last. And having that fat or protein mixed in there can definitely help with that. Let's see what Sadia has packed for lunch. I noticed that we weren't gonna have any plant-based proteins otherwise, and I love lentils for the protein and the fiber, and it's just delicious and easy. So we're just going to pour some of this on top and crush some cashews on there as well. Can I go on a picnic with Sadia? Honestly, this, I love this lunch even more than day one and we're on holiday, so that's crazy. Uh, but we've got some plant-based protein from the lentils, healthy fats from the avocado and olives, carbs from that beautiful bread, and of course, a lot of beautiful, colorful vegetables. I mean, and doesn't everything taste better on a picnic blanket with your partner? Just so cute. Anyway, I just love how Sadia just subtly puts on her dietitian hat by being mindful about incorporating plant-based protein with her meal by adding some lentils in there, while also highlighting the protein and the fiber that they provide. Sadia does talk in this clip later on briefly about the gas-promoting compounds in lentils, which are actually carbohydrates in the FODMAP family called oligosaccharides. Now, while oligosaccharides can make some people gassier than others, they are actually highly beneficial for our gut. And the gassy impact often comes down to how they're prepared. So like Sadia mentions in this clip, draining and rinsing canned legumes is one way to lower the oligosaccharide levels. And if you're cooking dried lentils, you should also soak and rinse them prior to cooking. However, I will say that canned rinsed legumes have a lower level of oligosaccharides than dried legumes. So if you're particularly sensitive to beans and FODMAPs, canned may be a better option for you. In addition, if you're not used to eating a lot of legumes, it's important to introduce them slowly over several weeks to allow your digestive system to really kind of adjust while also ensuring that you're drinking enough water. Taken together, all of those things should help minimize the effects. Let's move on to dinner. Got a lentil burger and in it, I have to look because I don't know exactly, is a mustard, coconut milk, lettuce, tomatoes, some zucchini, a vegan dill mayonnaise, and some potatoes. This looks super good. And to drink, I just got a decaf soy milk latte. Usually I'm fine with caffeine at night, but just to be safe. That does look so good. And the great thing about the global rise in the plant-based eating movement is that there's now a greater variety of plant-based meal options abroad, so there's really no need to just tuck into a boring plate of shredded lettuce while your friends are enjoying their regular burgers and fries. But this looks really, really delicious. I mean, we've got a lentil burger packed with plant-based protein and fiber and a side of crispy potatoes. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Abby, where are the vegetables? I mean, a burger and potatoes isn't exactly healthy, is it? Of course, when we talk about a balanced plate that is generally filled a quarter with protein, a quarter with starch, and half vegetables, we would probably want to add like a side salad with this. And obviously, Sadia knows this. But the same way I talked about the restaurant meals on Miles' channel from Healthy Crazy Cool, when we look at the context of this day, with all of these beautiful veggies and fruit that we saw at breakfast and lunch, 
there's no need to totally obsess. I mean, we're on vacation for goodness sake. I was lucky if I saw a few servings of vegetables a day when I was traveling in Italy. So I really actually appreciate Sadia's flexibility to just eat out. It seems like Sadia is simply choosing meals that sound delicious to her in that moment, while still considering what will ultimately satisfy her and complement her plant-based lifestyle. Super intuitive and honestly like a pleasure to watch. Another thing I want to flag is that my critique of each individual YouTuber's diet is going to look different because I'm looking at their day and the messages that they communicate as a whole. Sadia isn't going from zero to a hundred with clean kale smoothies to cheat days. She's also not eating six portions of salad at lunch and nothing else. So of course, when you eat a good amount of produce at one meal, it's okay to have much less or nothing at all later on in the day. Okay, now since we couldn't find another What I Eat In A Day video that wasn't like a travel day, I wanted to round this review off by looking at some of Sadia's popular recipes on her channel, starting with a breakfast recipe. And when you're ready to enjoy your wrap, just add the tofu scramble and the sweet potato mix to the wrap, along with the sliced bell peppers and some avocado. And if you like it spicy, some sriracha hot sauce. Okay, I just have to say that I think tofu scrambles are an awesome vegan alternative to scrambled eggs. They're super easy, just as satisfying, and nutrient packed. The crumbled tofu gives a similar texture to scrambled eggs, um, and the nutritional yeast adds some of that cheesy flavor plus some protein, and the turmeric also adds some color. But in this meal, we're getting a nice combination of some complex carbs from the sweet potato and tortilla, healthy fats from the avocado, as well as colorful vegetables in the form of bell peppers. Personally, I would probably double the bell peppers in there or throw in some spinach or greens like Sadia actually recommends as an option just to get some more non-starchy veg in there. But in general, this is a super flavorful and nutrient packed breakfast option that I think everyone can enjoy regardless of their dietary preferences. This is also a really great high protein breakfast option as one cup of tofu provides a whopping 20 grams of protein plus the nutritional yeast adds even more. I actually have a similar tofu scramble breakfast burrito recipe on the blog which I love to have as a post-workout meal for this very reason. Not only does tofu add a ton of protein and texture to vegan meals, but it also provides a great source of calcium, providing 90% of your daily needs per cup. Now, I wanna just mention that not all tofu products are created equal, so make sure that you check the label and look for one that is calcium set or has calcium sulfite on the label to get these bone boosting benefits. Okay, let's move on to lunch. The baguettes are pretty huge once they've been filled up, so we considered a whole baguette to be two servings. So feel free to have as much or as little as you'd like. Oh, now I like need a banh mi sandwich because not only are banh mi sandwiches one of the most delicious sandwiches in the sandwich kingdom, but as Sadia proves, they can also be made on a budget, which is something we all like to hear. So this vegan banh mi has some protein packed marinated tofu and fresh veggies and pickled veggies and is served on a beautiful whole wheat baguette. I also love that Sadia does a quick pickling of the carrots, otherwise known as a quickle, which is a great way to really add some lovely vinegary tartness to your veggies without having to wait for pickles to actually ferment. Now, some of you may be wondering if quick pickling has the same probiotic benefits as pickled fermented foods like kimchi or sauerkraut. Unfortunately, the answer is no. While pickling and fermentation are two methods of preservation that add some kind of sour, tangy flavor to veggies, they do have different preparation methods which ultimately yield different nutritional results. So to compare, pickling involves adding an acid like vinegar to vegetables to achieve that sour flavor. Now, even though vinegar is a product of fermentation, Pickled foods are not fermented by default, and unfortunately, they don't produce the same probiotic benefits as fermented foods. Fermented foods, on the other hand, get their sour flavor due to the reaction between the sugars in the food and bacteria. No acid is actually added. 
So when it comes to quick pickling, it's more about the flavor it provides rather than the probiotic benefits. But if you did want to boost the probiotics in this meal, you could totally add some kimchi and that would absolutely be a match made in heaven. And if you want to bump up the veg content even more, you could totally serve some of those quick pickled carrots and those beautiful cucumber ribbons on the side as well. That to me would be the ultimate complete meal. I also have to say that I love how Sadia uses non-judgmental language in this clip by mentioning that she would probably consider a whole baguette to be two servings, but you could eat as much or as little as you'd like. So rather than relying on external cues like serving sizes that a dietitian or somebody on the internet has decided for you, Sadia is suggesting that you rely on your own internal cues to determine how much or how little feels right for you. And finally, let's finish off with one of her classic dinner recipes. So I am so into veganizing traditional meat-based dishes like butter chicken, so this is totally up my alley. I mean, to me, anyways, the best part of any curry is not the meat in it, it's the sauce. Because let's be real, whenever I have curry leftovers, I literally just sometimes use the leftover sauce as like a dip for bread because that is my favorite part. But anyways, Sadia uses cashews in her curry to add that kind of creaminess factor without any cream. And she also gives an awesome tip to add a little squeeze of lemon juice to the curry at the end because it brings out the aromatic flavors. And also because the vitamin C can help your body better absorb the iron from the cashews and the tofu. This is a great tip as research has shown that individuals following a vegan or vegetarian diet are more likely to have low iron stores compared to non-vegetarians. While it is totally possible to get enough iron on a vegan diet, pairing non-heme iron-rich food sources with a source of vitamin C is a great way to maximize iron absorption. Other great sources of plant-based iron, in addition to tofu, include legumes, tempeh, soybeans, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and leafy greens. These sources could easily be paired with vitamin C-rich veggies like bell peppers, tomatoes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and dark leafy greens. So for example, this might look like having a lentil salad with some bell peppers and lime juice, like Sadia's picnic lunch on day two or adding some broccoli or Brussels sprouts to a tofu stir fry, or making a grain salad with some quinoa, spinach, pumpkin seeds, and a spritz of lime juice, or maybe even just pairing a handful of almonds with some fruit as a balanced snack. It does not need to be complicated as honestly, these pairings are quite intuitive and natural and ultimately really delicious. I also love that we have our protein in the tofu. We've got fats from the cashews and carbs from the rice and naan. All that is missing is a little bit more veg. So if we pair this with a simple cucumber salad or some roasted spiced veggies like broccoli or cauliflower, for example, we would be all set. But of course, this is just a recipe idea and not an actual meal. So on to our big questions in general, is this way of eating balanced? Absolutely. I would expect nothing less from a fellow dietitian. And part of the reason I put off doing this review was because I watched Sadia for plant-based inspiration all the time myself. And I knew this would be like almost too easy to go through. But I'm glad that I'm doing this for no other reason than to give credit where credit is due and ultimately to introduce you to Sadia if you're not already one of her 2.81 million subscribers. But seriously, folks, not only are her meals super balanced, easy, and delicious, but watching her cook in that gorgeous rustic kitchen is honestly therapeutic. As for Sadia's nutrition from her What I Eat In A Day videos, Sadia is, unsurprisingly, hitting all of her macronutrient ranges and her calories for the day. She's getting about 18 milligrams of iron from this day, which is the exact daily iron recommendation for menstruating women, and about 38 grams of fiber, which while above the 25 gram target that most people don't reach, 
is not the extreme 70 to 90 gram range that we've seen from a lot of other plant-based YouTubers. While she didn't mention it specifically in this video, which I would have liked to see, she does discuss her supplement regime elsewhere and the importance of taking vitamin B12 and vitamin D3, as well as an algae-based omega-3 supplement. So she could maybe add a little calcium supplement into the mix because she was about 15% below the recommended intake, but it's also really hard to judge what she is and isn't regularly getting since all of this is just from one home and one travel based what I eat in a day video. Now I know a lot of people often assume that veganism is unsustainable or may put one at risk for nutritional deficiencies. And while this may be true for some cases, as we've seen so often on my channel, following a plant-based vegan diet can certainly be done in a safe, nourishing and sustainable way. And I think Sadia is a really excellent example of that. Her meals are beautifully balanced with a wide variety of carbs, healthy fats, and plant-based proteins. I mean, we're not just seeing green juice and banana-only smoothies for every single meal. And while she definitely considers how to add more nutritional value to her meal, I mean, she is a dietitian after all, she also considers things like texture, flavor, satisfaction, and how to make her meals more digestible and easier to prepare. What I appreciate most is that Sadia seems to be all about adding nutritious foods to your diet, not taking things away, which is the philosophy that I also try to promote here at Abby's Kitchen. And this philosophy is evident in many of her nutrition videos where she does a really great job at communicating the evidence in a simple and understandable way with the underlying message being that all foods can fit in moderation. So for instance, in her video on oils and fats, she doesn't demonize one type of fat over the other, but rather provides a balanced overview of all of the different types of fat in the diet, their benefits, their disadvantages, whole food sources of those fats, and the types of fats that we should consume more often, like unsaturated fats, and the ones that we should consume less often, like saturated fats and trans fats. Similarly, in her video about sugar, she provides an evidence-based overview of the purpose of consuming sugar in the diet, the different types of sugar, like complex carbs versus simple carbs, as well as the positive and negative effects of sugar on the body. She certainly doesn't discourage sugar or carbohydrate consumption, but rather provides helpful tips on how to manage overall intake and to slow sugar absorption down by pairing carbohydrates with a source of protein or fat, which might sound familiar to you guys because that's basically my recommendation pretty much all day, every day. Now, are there any problematic claims or assumptions made by this channel? Honestly, you guys know that I have reviewed a lot of vegan content on the channel, and unfortunately, they haven't all been winners. But Sadia is a breath of fresh air. Not only is it great to have another evidence-based dietitian here on YouTube, but a responsible vegan one at that. And the fact that millions of viewers enjoy her content gives me confidence that anyone who's considering eating more plant-based will do so in an informed, safe, and enjoyable way if they're watching Sadia's content. And also a really delicious way, because let's be honest, you certainly don't have to be vegan to enjoy the amazing recipes here on Sadia's channel. Of course, someone out there is going to slam me for not being hard enough on her. So what I would say is that I do find her What I In A Day video to almost seem a little idealistic for most people. I mean, I get the sense that Sadia is trying to use her What I In A Day format to kind of share specific recipes from her blog, less so to just document a genuine day in her life. But some people may interpret this as a need to be making granola, falafel, pesto, chocolate mousse, all those things from scratch in one day. I mean, sometimes you just gotta eat leftovers and a bowl of cereal and call it a day. Most people just don't have that much time to do that much prep every single day, which may make vegan eating seem a little unattainable. But if you use Sadia's content as inspiration and even just decide to make like one of these meals each week, 
then I think you're actually gonna get a lot out of her channel. So while Sadi is really amazing at what she does and her recipes provide a ton of wholesome food inspiration, don't feel that you need to put pressure on yourself to be an Instagram friendly vegan meal prep master overnight. Okay, so finally, what can we take away from Sadia's channel? Oh, so much folks. I really appreciate that Sadia doesn't push a vegan agenda onto her followers, but instead promotes the benefits of including more plant-based foods into the diet, which is beneficial for everyone, vegan or otherwise. I say it all the time. Eating more plant-based has been shown to have a variety of health benefits, including improved blood sugar levels and lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It may also be protective against certain cancers and heart disease due to an increased intake of fruits, veggies, legumes, nuts, and soy products. So while you don't necessarily have to be vegan to reap the benefits of eating more plant-based, Sadia's channel is an amazing resource for anyone looking to eat more plant-based foods without feeling like you're making a huge sacrifice. Sadia's recipes are generally pretty accessible, wholesome, and delicious, and she is amazing at sneaking in little cooking hacks and nutrition tips that even beginners can apply in their life. When it comes to transitioning to veganism, Sadia actually has a whole beginner's guide to veganism that provides simple, sustainable, actionable tips for her followers. For instance, she talks about stocking up on essential vegan pantry staples, adding foods like legumes slowly into the diet to allow your digestive system to adjust, getting regular blood work done to monitor for improved biomarkers like cholesterol, as well as possible nutritional deficiencies. She also talks about the importance of taking vitamin B12 and vitamin D. And in another video, she's shown taking a algae-based omega-3 supplement and consuming a Brazil nut with her supplements for extra selenium. You can also trust that all of this information is evidence-based and not sensationalized extremism as we often see on the internet. Sadia also talks a lot about having a healthy mindset as you go through this process, giving yourself time to practice preparing vegan meals, honoring your hunger, thinking about foods that you can add in rather than take away, giving yourself permission to enjoy food and vegan treats, acknowledging that lifestyle changes like this aren't linear and it's okay to mess up and so much more. Many of us are so used to just black and white messaging telling us that we need to go from zero to 100 in a day, that any lifestyle change has to be perfect and precise, and if we mess up just a little bit, that we failed. And the vegan community often perpetuates this with a lot of really dogmatic food policing that goes on. I've heard from so many of you that you've been called out by certain vegan influencers for not being vegan enough. That is just not how you inspire change. The reality is changing our diet, whether that's going plant-based or upping our fiber or reducing our intake of saturated fat is a process. And we need to be compassionate and patient with ourselves to meet ourselves where we are. And speaking of meeting ourselves where we are, Sadia also covers some really amazing intuitive eating principles on her channel, like rejecting the diet mentality and how to honor your hunger. She discusses the importance of developing a nourishing and trusting relationship with food, one that doesn't dichotomize food as good and bad, and also giving yourself permission to eat all foods and find food freedom, which are all concepts that I wholeheartedly believe in and I discuss at length on my channel here. She also maintains that intuitive eating and strengthening your relationship with food is a process that ultimately takes time. Unlearning behavior and our thoughts and beliefs about food and eating is not something that necessarily can be done just overnight. The same goes for veganism and pretty much all things in life. It's those small manageable changes that will ultimately lead to sustainable long-term outcomes. So that is what I also personally really advocate for. Finally, not only does Sadia's channel have some amazing vegan recipe videos and nutrition content, but she also has some really wonderful health and wellness content to improve overall mental and emotional well-being. For instance, she's got some videos on how to decrease stress, improve productivity, some guided meditations, creating healthy habits, time management, overcoming feelings of failure, and finding balance. I mean, this girl really does it all. 
So whether you're in the mood for some plant-based recipe inspo, or you need some feel-good, compassionate encouragement to help you meet your goals, there is certainly something for everyone on the Pickup Lines channel, and I honestly could not recommend it enough. Bottom line, whether you're a seasoned vegan or simply interested in eating more plant-based, Sadia's channel is the place to be for some really wholesome, evidence-based, and aesthetically pleasing content. You can guarantee that you'll be getting knowledgeable and informed nutrition advice from a registered dietitian that encourages balance, sustainability, and self-compassion wrapped up in a plant-based package. I am personally a huge fan and really not surprised that she's had the success that she's had. Well, that is all for today, folks. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.